Hello, hello, it's Katie here, and I am doing Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. So, I had already kind of pre-sketched out Sally a little bit, but I kind of go over it a little bit here on how I came up with, like, her face is the most important part. I did an off-center um, plus sign and then added in her face. Um, but I had pre-sketched it just because... Um, sometimes I get camera shy and I didn't want to be spending a long, long time. This was a super long video, um, that I condensed down. I'm painting black all around Sally because I'm going to be using some Sherbet Kisses later on and I want those to look a certain way and on black they look pretty awesome. So, I did two coats of the black. This was a huge challenge for me because... I am not a cartoon painter and I am not very good at abstract so this was very challenging for me. I used a um, kneadable eraser to take off a lot of the, the um, graphite, couldn't think of the word, um, because I'm going to be using some watercolor which right now I'm using neon gouache from um, the Foiling Rock Lady. And I'm sorry, it's going to go in and out blurry. Um, I'm going to kind of mess with it on and off through the whole video um, until I can get it to quit doing that. Um, so I also, she has some uh, flat white drops that I added into the neon blue to lighten up the blue for her skin. So I started painting in her arms and hands and neck and her face with the little bit that I have lightened up right now. And one side of her face is darker for the darker shading and then one side gets lighter. So you're going to see me layer and layer and layer and I'm going to keep going in and adding details and um, making parts of her face lighter, parts of her face darker. I am a layering artist. I like to layer my colors and so I'll let something dry and go on to another section and then go back to it later and relayer. I also, this is a 4x4 Santorini stone. Shout out to Santorini stones by Shelly, although I think she's stones by Shelly now. Um, she's on Etsy and um, I, uh, so Yes, I did cover it up. I know y'all can, y'all can yell at me afterwards, but uh, I cover up most of my Santorini stones, but I like it because it's flat, perfectly flat. So, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm a layering artist and that's pretty much how I work and I just shade, put a little color, take a little color away, shade some more. Now I'm adding some violet in underneath the eyes excuse me I'm having so this is my time of year to have allergies and um, I'm a little stopped up tonight so now I'm going back in and I'm darkening the right side of her face again and I held it up in the light because I wanted you to see there was a couple of spots there that um, were still lighter so I was covering that up And I'm going to go back and forth on her forehead until I get it where I want it. Now I'm using black in the Arteza gouache. And um, I'm going to be working on her nose. There's a little bit of a shadow under her nose. So I start off with it dark and then I'm going to work my layers until I get it just right. Oh, I think I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. When I'm filming this voiceover, I can't pause the voiceover. So, you get to hear everything. So, I'm still working on the nose. Building the nose up. And that includes working on the shadow at the eye. That's also going to help build the nose up, too. And I'm working with these little tiny brushes. Um, they're pretty much all nail brushes that I work with. I do have some round brushes 
the Arcagria brushes that I like using. Um, and I have some cheapy Walmart special ones that that I get and use, um, not for real detail work, but um, just for the larger sections. Um, but I pretty much stick to the small brushes for the fine line, fine details. So now I'm blending some of that purple down on her cheek. I don't know if that my camera's wanting to focus on the brush or what, but it's going nuts. So now I'm doing a little bit of a mixture. I'm using um, Wanda's Neon Gouache in the red and in the orange. And I'm just putting in my base. And you'll see me go through and add some light orange in with the dark red. It says red. It looks orange, but it's, it's a neon red. So I'm just blocking in all the hair, which is what I typically do is block in stuff and then layer the rest of it out. Now, when I tried to do the violet over that orange, it wasn't working. So you're going to see me kind of fool with this on and off through the whole video till I get it where I want it. The actual color. But... I was going to condense this down even more and, and make it um, shorter, but I wanted you to kind of see that I'm going to do things throughout the video that I don't like and I'm going to go back and fix. And I think that's really important for you to see that because um, sometimes I'll paint something and I don't like it and I'll change it. And um, if, if I speed it up real fast, you really don't catch everything that I'm doing, but you are seeing all the in and out because um, I'll pause the video um, if I'm waiting on something to dry or if I have to go take care of something, um, I pause the video so you're going to see it pop on and off. Now I'm just outlining her eyes and I'm using the Arteza Noir, N-O-I-R, black. Now I'm doing the, the um, eyes and I used the yellow in the shots. It's the sherbet shots, I think. Or I'm not sure what she calls that. Let me tell you. The macaron shots in lemon is what I put first. Because I kind of wanted that dingy yellowy color. And I put, all, I put that in there. And now I'm adding shading with a little bit of blue on my brush to the eyes and then you're going to see me mix in I'm going to do some pink and some orange mixed with white and just kind of dab it in there so it gives the eyeball like this really cool um, rounded eerie effect now I went in with a white gel pen that I got from Wanda the foiling rock lady um, they're awesome gel pens and they write through any of this stuff. They're not, they don't get clogged up like some pens. So, um, I love using it to go in and do any kind of white highlighting or a little bit of shading. Now I'm adding some violet into her dress. And this is the neon violet. gouache and then I also added um, I pulled out a little bit of my whole bean in violet and was using a little bit of that just for a little bit of a tonal difference but for the most part I used the violet gouache I mean yeah violet neon gouache and so I'm not caring too much about having like this solid violet color on the dress because you're going to see later in the video that a lot of that bottom part of the dress is going to get covered up, but I wanted to mostly get in um, some violet all over. And I'm just drawing the first line to the rose. I had a little bit of trouble with this rose too. I thought it was going to be fairly easy, 
but um, you're going to see me go over the stem many times and over the rows many times until I get it the colors I want it. So basically right now I'm just kind of going through and adding some lines in. I'm adding some scars. I'm defining some areas like her arm and hand and her hair. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of doing some of that detail stuff. And I usually do that if I'm waiting on something to dry. So now I'm going and darkening and shading some darker red into that hair. And bring it down just a bit and give it some tonal difference. And then I'm adding some uh, neon orange that I've added white to. And I'm working on her sleeve. And that's just kind of an abstracty, messy kind of thing. And that's what I... I am not an abstract artist. I need to do more abstract work and get used to it. But um, this was the picture that I chose to... Um, look at while I was working on her um, was very abstracty and so it was a big challenge but I wanted to show you that I do challenge myself too so I put challenges out there for y'all but I also challenge myself so um, it was definitely a challenge I will tell y'all that but I was ha I'm happy with it in the end now I added her part in and I'm going to go in and take some of that out later. I just, um, I wanted to start, um, putting in some, um, darker areas. Like I added a little bit of a streak of black in there and, um, then I'll go in and layer and kind of cover up some of it. This is my whole painting process and this is when I was sitting there trying to think of what do I want to do next. <laughs> Oh, shoot. It was so mixed up in all the videos, I didn't know where that pause was. So I thought, I'll just leave it in there and I'll talk. <laughs> Tell you what was going on. I didn't know where I wanted to go next. But, uh... I'm just kind of doing more scars and fine lining stuff right now. <clears throat> And now I'm working on her chest scar. And I was trying to do an abstracty kind of thing for her chest scar. And I struggled with that. Uh, in the end, I was happy-ish with it. But um, it definitely was a, a challenge. And I'm just going back and adding green, adding purple, adding black, adding in some of the little stitching. And then um, I took some blue and uh, went in and fixed it a little bit because I had made it just a little bit wide on the bottom. So I went in and fixed a little bit of it. Now I'm drawing these little curly things that she had on her, the top that she has on. And I'm not doing any kind of particular thing. I'm just drawing a line with a little curly cue on the end. Um, because like most of that bottom part's going to get covered. So I just wanted a little design up there and it's nothing uh, special that I, that I did. I just did a little loop-de-loop. So I'm back to working on the sleeve once all of that paint's dried. And now I'm adding some more tone into the hair. And um, I did take some of the Arteza reds. Um, I did uh, the crimson and the vermilion. Um, a little bit of that to add some tones to it or I mixed it with the neon orange and then put it or the neon red and then put it in her hair um, because I was just trying to make differences of color and I'm back on the sleeve and I did um, put a little bit of green on her hands and then 
Uh, after you put the green, I put a little bit of white, and so it kind of like pops that out. The the sleeve on the left side in the picture is very um, abstracty, so that's what I'm working on right now. I'm pretty sure abstracty is not a word, but it's me. And I have lots of Katieism, so sorry about that. Now I'm going to start adding some of the outside details. Um, like I, I'm waiting on stuff to dry, and um, so I start adding other details in other places. And um, I do want to warn you that I do, at the end, I run out of video. Um, my my phone was full, so I had to add a few details after the fact because I couldn't film anymore. So um, the very end is not going to be exactly like the final picture of the rock, but um, I was just about done. Now I did put her eye her pupils in for her eyeballs. And I used a Posca pen for that. Now I'm putting in the lips. And I'm using Crimson Red from Marteza Gouache. And the black mm -hmm. to draw out the lips line. Which will be the scars. Grab a drink real quick. Now I'm starting to work on the background of the rose. I want it to, I'm slowly going to take it down darker because I want that rose to pop. And at first, when I do the rose, it's blending in with their hair. So that's what I have to work on later. And this is where I'm working on the stem. That little rainbow fine brush I've been using, I get those from Wanda, the Foiling Rock Lady on Etsy. They're super fine for really tiny, tiny work. And I, I love them. So that's where it's kind of blending in. So you're going to see me work on it throughout the video. Um try to bring the rose out and then darken the background of her hair so that it pops a little bit. And I let the paint dry before I put anything on top of it. So um, that's why you're going to see me going back and forth. So there I'm darkening some more. You can see that rose starting to pop out. Now I <laughs> I put down some orange and a little bit of water came down from the top of my brush and did a big old splat so I had to fix that. All my little boo-boos you're seeing. So now I'm taking the Sherbet Kisses from the Foiling Rock Lady and also um, the Unicorn Shimmer. And I'm just taking a little bit of every color and I'm making little squiggly lines. So this is like the beginning of the background. And I'm kind of just squiggling it up and around and adding different colors because all the work that I'm going to do is going to be afterwards um, when I start blending in colors and start, you'll see in a second. But the video will cut out here in a bit, here in a minute. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching my video. And um, I hope that this is, this is for um, our little monthly adventure that we do in in uh stones by shelly um our facebook group uh we started out with a train and now um we do something different take different forms of transportation or whatever and this is sally week 
So I'm just still putting in some uh, sherbet kisses. And as you see now, I'm starting to blend. So basically, you want to go in and take out all those harsh lines. And it also brings back some of the black. And just makes it look more like this wild galaxy-ish sky. And like Sally's just coming up out of the middle of it or something. So I this part was super fun. Um, I had a lot of fun building it and putting it together. And I hope y'all give it a try. And have just as much fun as I did painting Sally. I am making the little star meteors whatever I don't know um, I started out with some of the orange and then I put white and then I put yellow so uh, you just want it to look like a bright little star and we're coming up towards the end just keep blending and have some fun with it and there you go Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day, weekend, week, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.